Hey, and welcome back to another Revit video. And in this video, we're going to look at a really cool add-on called Pi Revit. I'm sure you've heard of it in passing, if not already using it. So if at any point in the video, you happen to learn something or just end up liking the video, please demolish that like button. It really helps me out a lot. All right, getting into it now. Pi Revit. This video is technically a few years old because Pi Revit has, it's gone around. I mean, it's, it's nothing new, I'll say, but in a sense, it's new because I want to cover it. I want to kind of cover it uh, at least from start to finish to the extent that I can. There is a lot to it, uh, but if you're not familiar with it, it is basically one of the largest, most well-known, most used uh, set of add-ins that is with, you know, available to Revit. And it installs separately, so it's not necessarily a part of Autodesk, which debatably makes it really great. Um, but on top of that, yeah, it, it's basically one add-in, but it's got a ton of different add-ins and basically uh, quick things that would help you in your normal daily Revit life uh, throughout a project. And beyond that, it's got the capability to allow you to create your own, organize your own, do that kind of a thing on your own. And the reason it's called Pi Revit is because you can use Python to make your own add-ins as opposed to C Sharp, which is uh, what all traditional Autodesk or at least Revit add-ins are used to make. So Python, I, I know very little bit of Python and to that degree, I'm not going to be using Python to make anything of my own. Now I will say uh, the reason I really want to get into showing you what PyRevit can do is not only introduce you to it if you're not aware of it, but uh, the fact that it can integrate pretty well with Dynamo. So uh, I've had issues in the past and still am fighting through the issue of deploying scripts uh, to multiple users across maybe at least one, but multiple networks. And besides that, yeah, I know there's some add-ins, but I've tried those. But what PyRevit can do is serve as that platform to deploy. And we're going to get into that much later on because this video is just an intro and maybe some basic configurations of getting it up and running and getting it installed on Revit. So I'm going to leave it a link to this website below. This is actually, I guess you consider, would consider the homepage of PyRevit, which is just a notion document that is online, whatever. I will leave that below and really all the information you need uh, to get it going is in here, but nonetheless, we're going to install PyRevit and it is pretty simple. We can see, we can get it from this location, run it as administrator. This is fairly simple stuff. Um, I do want to point out that you always want to load it. Um, a lot of times people would say, oh, I don't want this thing to load because I don't know what it is, whatever. But typically you, you're better off saying always load because it's probably something that you want, especially if it's something like this that you're uh, downloading yourself. And we've got the versions and all of this and we can deal with that. So let's go ahead and get this going. So I'll click on the link here. I've seen I've got my installers and I'm an admin, so I'm going to click on that and we will save it. And whenever this is downloaded, I will take you to Revit. So the setup has now finished. I'm going to come over to Revit and look, <laughs> this pops up immediately, which is great. I don't even have to close Revit, which is awesome. You know, a lot of times that's the case with add-ins because it's not like you're, you're needing to fully refresh the system. So I can always load and then that's it. Very cool. So I'm going to go into just this basic project once this is done loading and we can start to explore uh, the configuration of it. And not only that, but what we see, what we get out of the box and and go from there. And once I open Revit, you might get some errors. Just close them. That's not a huge deal. I ended up opening Revit again, got them again. Uh, but here we are. We can uncheck these because I don't really care about these necessarily. Click OK. All right. And here we are in Revit. And we can see here at the top, I've got my Pi Revit. There's a lot here. Like clearly look at all this stuff. <laughs> There's a lot. So what is likely going to happen is I'll take multiple videos to go through these different sections and it might be specific videos depending on the specific tool. Um, but as far as configurations go, uh, we're not quite done yet because I want to come back here to the main page and then we just want to look at configure Pi Revit. There's a lot here. There really is a lot here. And the main thing we want to look at is the settings and we can find those settings. I mean, back to Revit, expanding the Pi Revit here, and then we can see, ooh, look, there's a lot here also, <laughs> but specifically the settings. And so this is probably what we care about when it comes to configuring. If we're following that website, again, I'll leave that link as well. So there's a lot of settings here, and I'm going to look at the core settings. Uh, 
do we want to include this rocket mode? If enabled pirate will use a shared engine for each extension, it's just going to make things run better, quicker, easier. Yeah, speed boost right there. Do we want to check for updates whenever Revit loads? Choose this or don't, that kind of thing. Um, this is the type of thing I wouldn't necessarily mess with. Um, if you want a more recent version or if you want a uh, older version of Python engine, you can, but most of the time I'm not going to be messing with this. If you are a developer and you know what you're doing, you can load the beta tools here, uh, that type of thing. Dealing with cache, don't need to worry about that. Environment variables, again, these are things you probably don't want to mess with, uh, but this is taking PyRevit all the way down to the root of your system and allowing, giving it access that it needs. Uh, reporting levels, how do we want to report different issues here? We can not report anything. Uh, no reports are printing, and we can have specific logs that are printed, or if you want to actually go through the debug mode whenever you run these things, you can deal with that. I'm not going to deal with that at all. Startup checks, probably not something I'm going to use either. Routes, you know, all these kinds of things. I, I What I want to do is ultimately look at this configure, and we can go through this different settings here. Obviously, the language, you know, this UI UX, clearly set your language. This is where you would do it. Uh, colorizing, color styling, which is really cool. This is a, something we'll get into in another video, but um, you can colorize open documents, which means you, depending on the project you have open, the number of projects, things like that, you can say, all right, I want it to be this color, project one to be this color, that type of thing, which uh, definitely go into this as much as you want, because uh, this is really useful when it comes to seeing all the views you have open in tabs. And I will say this is uh, in a way, replacing an add-in that I uh, did a video on recently, which would color the tabs. And I think it was called Colorized Tabs, something like that. Um, I can't find that on the Autodesk add-in website anymore. So this is going to be a great uh, replacement to that because not only can it do this, but it can do 100 other things. So go ahead and play with that. It seems like it would be a lot of fun. I will say that this document does point out that there is some compatibility with Dynamo that you need to make sure you have. Uh, when it comes to setting this engine, you can see specifically here with this Iron Python version, um, it's obviously backward compatible with this particular version of Dynamo. Now, I will say whenever I come up to uh, my core settings, I am not able to change the active engine. I'm only able to change the uh, Python engine. Now, this might be something that's uh, updated with I'm, I'm in Revit 2022 that might be different. Um, might be because I only have one version installed. There's a lot here. So just kind of note that if you want to use Dynamo when it comes to PyRevit with it, uh, we will get to this later on and make sure we have all of these compatibility things working. But we've got supported versions, which is good to see. We have lots of different versions of Revit. We basically get a report of all the different versions that are on your system. In this case, Obviously, it works through from Revit 2017 up through 22 and perhaps 23, but I only have all of these installed, so that works great. And when it comes to the rest of the settings, that's going to be great. I'm just going to save my settings. You can reload all this later. Um, there might be times where you'll have to actually reload, and by reload, it's going to reload this entire uh, Python script or Python add-in, all of PyRevit. So if we're exploring this just initial drop-down tab, we, of course, have the settings. Uh, we have icons, which this is cool, takes you immediately here, and you can start to change these icons. You can use this to basically get new icons for Revit. I, you know, if you want to go to the trouble and do that, great. Uh, the reason I've seen this done particularly is because there's a lot of different uh, versions of Revit, and they all, a lot of them look the same as in like this basic blue R now. So it's good to see that you can go through the differences and i might have make another video on actually applying these because we see we have a lot more than just uh, revit we have a lot more that we can work with looking back here we've got if you're familiar with regular expressions uh, i'm just going to open a website and this is really great with working with regular expressions to get an idea if you're uh, in the ballpark of it working or not and i would i mostly use this and heard about it being used for creating revit family formulas things like that so uh quick reference there. You can obviously report bugs. We can open this, open the latest version of Revit here on this API doc. So if you're familiar with the API, then this is going to be a great reference tool. Again, a lot of these are just going to be quick links. 
the things. Of course, we've got emojis. Um, don't necessarily need to go see that. Open the documentation page for Revit Python wrapper. Again, lots of things that uh, mainly just uh, quick links. Now, the, the thing I want to get to now is extensions. And I would, I would be careful with this, but let's click on extensions. And you can see that there's a lot here. And so what are we actually looking at? Well, uh, obviously, we have PyRevit that's installed. It's running in Revit, and that's what we see. Now, everything below here, everything here listed here is, in a sense, another, I'm not even going to say instance of PyRevit, but it's it's another add-in that's basically running through PyRevit, but it's going to populate as a completely separate toolbar. And that's cool because we have a ton of things here that give us a lot of access to even more tools that we have with PyRevit. Again, there's a lot that we need to get to when it comes to these PyRevit tools specifically, but I will say there's a lot here, of course, because all of these have a ton that go with it. I will say that um, I'm not necessarily going to trust all of these just out of the box, just based on the fact that, you know, it's hard to tell who made them, but I will say that these here, these top few are made by the actual developer of Python, which is this guy here. And so I would be more willing to trust those. So we can see here, Pi Revit tools, that is going to be, that's enabled by default. And that's what we're working with right here. Now let's come over here to, uh, maybe we want to work with this Pi Revit templates. I don't know. We can just simply come down, we can get more information on it. Uh, then we can actually enable the extension, which is cool. And not only that, but uh, we've, we can of course see who's developed it, but we can also look at the, basically go straight to the GitHub and get it from there if we want to, but obviously PyRevit's making it easier for us. Uh, but it's cool because we can get an idea of what this is because this is shipped with PyRevit. It's taking us just to the PyRevit notion. And likewise, if there's one that we know we want, like maybe we want this PyApex, we can simply install this. Obviously, we can look at everything else that it's involved with, but um, we can simply install it or update it if we have it installed. But we want to install this, and we'll install this to you know basically the same location that PyRevit is installed, so we can reference it all the same. And once we install this, and you can see once it's installed, we can see it right there, which is awesome. That's really great to see. I didn't have to reload. I didn't have to do anything like that. So really nice. And obviously, <laughs> there's a ton more here that we can use as far as like these add-ins. These, these, some of these are great. Some of them are, are kind of some of the same things. Uh, one thing I do want to point out about PyRevit and some of the tools here is that it might be something that you can create that I've created in Dynamo, things like that. Um, but the cool thing is that it's, I would call it a little bit more of a stable version. The fact that it's on a toolbar and it's got a button named and everything. And of course you have descriptions of what it does. But besides that, I think uh, there, we will find a number of things that kind of remove the purpose of some of the Dynamo scripts that I've made or others have made in the past, but that's okay. The cool thing here is that we can start with this and we're at a higher level already because we can easily click these things and get them to work for us. Uh, but then as we get more into Dynamo and PyRevit, we can integrate our own custom scripts that don't necessarily do something that PyRevit does. And that's something we'll get to later on because we want to look at PyRevit and everything it can do first. Because there's a lot on the table that we're uh, leaving if we don't use PyRevit. And you'll you'll see that in future videos as we really get into PyRevit and its workings because it, it is some great stuff. So uh, look for all of those links in the description below. If you need to get it installed or having some issues, you'll find that there. That will do for this video. We looked at PyRevit. Uh, great big overview, like nothing too great. We didn't get into the specifics of any tools. Uh, we looked at all of the intro kind of configuration aspects of it. And later on, we will get into the specifics, probably going tab by tab here, uh, panel by panel to get an idea of what things are doing for us. So thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video or just happen to learn something, please demolish that like button. It helps me out so much. And I'll see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day. Thank you very much for watching.